Are you building Genia apps? Azure API Management's Genia Gateway capabilities greatly simplify managing and governing access to AI models across the organization. I'm Andre, and let's check it out. In Azure API Management portal, I can now create an API from the existing Azure OpenAI service. I can simply select existing OpenAI service, select the version, give it a name, and I can make sure that this API is compatible with popular SDKs that expect the base URL to be appended with slash OpenAI at the end. And this checkbox also makes sure that SDKs such as OpenAI, Langchain, Pondflow, and others work seamlessly with Azure API Management so that AI application developers, they only need to change two things, the base URL, and they need to provide a new key in the SDK. On the second tab, I can configure GenAI specific policies. First, I can configure short-term limit for my applications in tokens per minute. And second, I can apply long-term quotas in tokens per hour, per day, per week, or per month. I can also enable token usage tracking, which will send prompt completion and total tokens used by each application as a metric to application insights. I can add multiple dimensions to later on split the usage by API ID or subscription ID to understand the usage across multiple applications or development teams and do course charges, respectively. And lastly, I can enable semantic caching in Azure API Management to lower the number of tokens consumed and at the same time improve latency for my users. This feature allows me to return cached completions for identical prompts and for prompts that are similar in meaning. I use similarity score to configure how similar two prompts should be to return completion from cache. And as a last parameter here, I specify cache duration. When Azure API Management imports Azure OpenAI API, it also configures managed identity authentication from APIM to OpenAI endpoint, so that you don't need to share or even store your OpenAI keys anymore. Now when I have my API imported and pre-configured with policies, I need to grab a URL and a key to use in my application, which I already did in uh, this Python notebook. To test token-based limiting, I'm sending 10 simple prompts using the script and expect to receive 429 status code return from the API when the tokens per minute limit is exceeded. Now I can visualize this and um, as demonstrated here, once I almost reached 500 tokens used, I was throttled on all of the following requests. Now imagine my organization purchased a PTU endpoint located in Canada. Now I need to load balance across two endpoints. One is located in Canada, which is my PTU endpoint, and another one located in East US, which is my pay go endpoint. And to do that, I can use load balancer and circuit breaker features in Azure API Management. I already added both endpoints as backends to Azure API Management. So now what I want to do is I want to configure circuit breaker rules for each of the backends. I'm configuring each circuit breaker so that it will trip the circuit if there is a 429 status code return from the backend. And it will remain tripped for the duration that is specified in the retry after header returned in the response from the endpoint. Now I'm going to repeat the same process for the second backend. Now we need to add both backends to the low balancing pool. Now I'm selecting these two backends from the dropdown and adding them to the low balancer pool. And I can configure priority based low balancing so that my OpenAI backend located in Canada is used first and US located backend is used as a failover endpoint. And the last change I need to make is I need to make sure that my API now utilizes this low balancer as a backend. Now, when I applied new configuration with load balancer, I can send multiple sample prompts to the same API to demonstrate that the requests are routed to Canada East endpoint first. And once APIM receives 429 from the endpoint, it reroutes the request to the East US endpoint. And when Canada East endpoint is recovered, APIM will use it again according to the priority rules that we configured. One of the features we configured during import was semantic caching. Now let's see how it works. I will send 10 prompts asking what time is it in different formats. And now when we visualize this, we can see that our first request took almost 1.6 seconds while others were returned much faster. And the last thing we configured was application insights integration. I can navigate to application insights, um, select the namespace where I store my token metrics and see how many prompts, completions and total tokens were consumed by this API. And on top of that, I can split it by subscription ID to have a more granular understanding of the model usage so that I can do cross charges later based on this metric. All right, my team started experimenting with other models deployed through Azure Model Catalog, and I want to apply similar policies to them. 
So what I did here is I already imported um, this inference API, which is a single API for multiple models deployed through this catalog. And I applied this LLM token limit policy for this API. And now I can send the request to this um, new API. And in the response, we should be able to see that this request was served by 5.3 model. And the second request is going to be throttled as we configure it through our LLM token limit policy. There you have it. That's Gen AI gateway capabilities in Azure API management. Give it a try today and let us know what you think. Thank you.